Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Wout. I'm a data engineer at Fondex Cusif, and I'm here to talk about how we stream data into BigQuery and how we use protobuf contracts uh, to generate BigQuery schemas. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about Von Exclusive, what we do, uh, and also about how our platform is put together. Afterwards, I'm going to talk about how we capture our data and stream it into BigQuery, and also do schema generation uh, with protobuf contracts. And then finally, I'll cover how we include those, pro uh, those contracts uh, inside our pipelines and how we update our pipelines accordingly. So, who here knows Von Exclusive? <laughs> ah, there are a few people here. Didn't expect that. Um, so Von Exclusive, what do we do? Uh, we're based in Belgium. We're uh, a market leader in the flash sales market in the Benelux. And uh, we're a web shop. So um, it's a bit like Salando, but the main difference in the business model is that we, uh, we sell overstock and we only have sales that last for a few days. Um, as we have uh, a very specific business model, our platform is uh, uh, quite specific. And um, we built most of it in-house over the years. Well, after uh, building it for a few years, it started to look, look something like this. <laughs> so I think you're, you, uh, most of you are familiar with uh, the monster in the picture. It's the monolith. And it's uh, the way our platform started to look after a few years. Um, and uh, Two years ago, our architects went to the business side and they uh, started saying, yeah, it's not efficient anymore. Uh, we have to do something about it. So they convinced them to give us time to decompose it into microservices. Um, so this is an overview of our microservice architecture. As you can see, uh, we got many different microservices. For example, uh, we got two front-end microservices, uh, which is one is, is a shop itself. Uh, where users can interact and buy stuff. The other one is our back office, uh, which is responsible, um, uh, which is built uh, for our employees to be able to configure our platform, to configure sales, uh, upload items, stuff like that. And then uh, the core of our, of our back office, uh, our, our uh, backend services are written in .NET, um, and they each have their own Mongo database. Uh, for example, there is a, a cards microservice uh, that's responsible for all the business logic regarding cards. So when a user buys an item on the site, uh, puts it in its cart, uh, the card microservice is responsible of propagating all the actions needed throughout the platform. Um, we also um, have microservices regarding logistics for the warehouse to make sure that all, uh, all parcels are routed correctly and the communication is done uh, all right. And uh, my team, the data team, also has specific uh, microservices, which are responsible uh, for serving data to the other microservices. So those microservices are mainly written in Go and Python, um, and um, they serve data from our data lake to services that need it. So they mostly aggregate data from our data lake and serve it uh, in an according way. Well, uh, to come to the data squad, we got three main responsibilities. And the first one is uh, that we want to provide analysts with uniform queryable data. Uh, we got analysts in our different departments, like uh, strategy, marketing, and finance. And we want them to uh, provide them with a, a data warehouse where they can find all the data uh, they need and can uh, sort of uh, have a self-service uh, way of, uh, of uh, um, consuming it. So they can, uh, run, they can write their own SQL queries and run it on them. Uh, next to that, we also need to provide the business with valuable real-time information uh, so they can make uh, decisions accordingly. And uh, we're going to calculate KPIs uh, for them. Um, they used to calculate their own KPIs themselves at each department, but we stopped doing that because everyone had their own version of what a, KPI, what a specific KPI should look like. So every, uh, if we had two different analysts at different departments, they would calculate the same KPI in a different way. Uh, which, which was inconsistent. That's why we said, okay, we're going uh, to define a clear set of KPIs that we at the data team are going to calculate where the analysts can work with. And uh, then the third responsibility is the relevance part, uh, which is more the data science part, data science part of the data team, and uh, it's mainly focused on recommender systems. So how do we uh, collect data and put it into our data lake? So we have our microservices, 
and uh, they publish uh, events, which we call entities, on Google Cloud PubSub. So for example, when a cart gets updated, an item is put into the cart, then uh, the whole cart entity is published on Google Cloud PubSub. Once it's, pubs uh, once it's published, we have a, a streaming pipeline in Beam that we run on uh, Google Cloud Dataflow that we stream into uh, our respective uh, uh, database technologies. And we use uh, BigQuery for a data warehouse for the analysts. Uh, we also use Bigtable to have a source of proof um, where we, we, uh, we stream all the entities in. And we also make use of the historical dimension. So we get like, a historical way of uh, capturing every entity that's published. And uh, next to that, we also stream into Elastic uh, to be able to search on certain entities, mainly for a back office. So the user of the, user of the back office uh, can really find uh, the entities they're looking for. Um, when I'm going to talk about uh, the schema generation for BigQuery, I will focus on uh, the streaming pipeline uh, to BigQuery, so from PubSub uh, to BigQuery. Uh, and for this, like I already mentioned, we use Protobuf. We have a contracts first approach. So uh, on the left hand side, you see a Protobuf contract of a card with a few fields like a card ID, a member ID, and the nested fields, uh, the money, which has a double value and a string uh, saying which currency it's in. And uh, with this contract, we serialize uh, the structured data that you see in JSON format. We serialize it and put it on PubSub. So this way, it's published on PubSub. And uh, when it comes into our pipeline, it's deserialized into a Java object um, because we use a Java SDK for Beam. Now, why are we using Protobuf? Um, we do it mainly because of our contracts first approach. So we have one proof uh, as a contract for entities. There's also backwards compatibility, which is nice because contracts, they change a lot. Um, and it doesn't allow breaking changes. And with a breaking change in Protobuf, it means like changing the field type uh, it should not be possible, and Protobuf enforces this, which is also uh, a good thing. And another uh, advantage that we really make use of is uh, the generated message descriptors uh, by Protobuf. And we use them to uh, be able to loop over our fields. And we can loop over our fields and get information from it, like the field types uh, and uh, the names of the fields. And we're going to use it uh, to, to generate our schemas. So. Um, to generate the BigQuery schema, uh, we get the Protobuf contract. Uh, we generate uh, Java code from it, so the Java object. And um, what we then need to do is convert this Java object into a table schema object. So we will need to map all the types of our Protobuf contract to the table schema object. For this, we will use those descriptors. And here's a small example. So in a recursive way, we will make sure that all the field types are mapped accordingly. Uh, until we come to a BigQuery schema. And as you can see here, for example, um, I, it's, it's something you need to define pretty clearly. Because for example, in Protobuf, a long is uh, defined as an in64 field. But BigQuery doesn't work with it. It's, it considers integers and longs in the same way. So you need to make a clear mapping for this. Um, we're also lucky that nested fields are supported by BigQuery. So you can see, you can insert records in BigQuery. The money type is a record which has uh, some subfields, the value, and the currency, which is pretty useful. Um, another thing to note here is that this step takes place before we actually run our pipeline. So we generate a schema with all the objects, and then we store it in uh, some kind of cache um, so we don't have to do it at runtime. And then the next step um, is, uh, is uh, converting all the objects uh, that we get, actually the, the incoming data from PubSub to a table row object. So we can stream them into BigQuery itself. So the data comes in through PubSub, which is, uh, um, which is serialized. Here it's, it's a deserialized re representation. But on PubSub it's serialized and we parse it into the Java object um, with, uh, through Protobuf. And what, once it's in, uh, in the generated object, which in this case would be a card object, Instead of uh, um, mapping the field types here, we need to cast all the fields, so really the values of the fields in the right way. And we also do this through this uh, message descriptor uh, API. Um, 
And when it's converted into a table row object, we can easily stream it into BigQuery with the BigQuery I.O. Um, connector. And uh, this uh, happens in the process element step of a do fun. Um, so it's just a do fun that uh, deserializes the bytecode and uh, converts it to a table row. <coughs> Um, now I'm going to talk about how we include those contracts in our pipeline. And we do this uh, in a CI-CD process in which we uh, take our Beam code, so our pipeline code, and we add the latest contracts. Then in a Docker build, we trigger first a protobuf build to, convert its, uh, to, to generate the, the Java classes that we need. And afterwards, we do a complete Java build uh, for a whole pipeline um, to make sure it's runnable. Uh, the, resulting, uh, the result of this is a, is a runnable uh, pipeline Docker image, which we then push uh, to the, our container registry on GCP, and we add a latest tag. So we always, when we, when we look for the image, we always have the latest pipeline with the latest contracts. And uh, this CICD progress is a process is uh, triggered by a uh, code change in our pipeline itself, or every time when a contract changes. So we're certain that once this CICD pipeline is complete, that we have the latest uh, version in our container registry. Uh, and now for uh, the updates itself. So imagine we have our streaming pipeline that's streaming uh, the sub entities um, into BigQuery and it's just running in real time. A couple of times a day, we schedule an air airflow task that um, has, to, has to take two steps uh, to make sure the pipeline is updated. And the first step will be to update the table schemas of BigQuery accordingly. So this step is going to get the latest contracts, uh, figure out which schemas, uh, which, which are the new schemas, and then do a call to the BigQuery API to update the table schemas accordingly. Once this is done, uh, we can run, we can get our latest Docker image from our container registry and do a Dataflow pipeline update. Um, and we're quite happy that Dataflow supports this. So if you add the update parameter, um, the, the pipeline that was already running, uh, the state of it gets stored and it, uh, it gets updated uh, out of the box, uh, which is nice. Now, there's also a case where this fails, uh, and that can happen when, for example, uh, our protobuf contracts, uh, the, if there was a field removed, uh, BigQuery doesn't support field removals. So if this happens, uh, we, the pipeline shouldn't be updated. Um, we just get a Slack notification and the current pipeline just keeps running. And uh, the way to solve this is a manual intervention, which is not that nice. So uh, for us, field removal in general, for protobuf, it's not a breaking change. But for our system, we consider it as a breaking change because we'll have to make sure that the, the tables are updated accordingly. So first we need to take a backup of the table. We need to recreate it with the right schema and repopulate it. And we do this with a batch pipeline. We're quite lucky that this doesn't happen often, and uh, we have some clear communication about it, but it can be quite a hassle. Um, so the takeaways of this talk are that the contracts first approach uh, can be very useful, uh, especially when streaming into multiple database technologies. Uh, we're also looking into streaming our, our entities into Spanner, in which we can also do schema generation and, uh, and also the conversion of uh, of uh, our BigQuery, uh, our protobuf objects into spanner mutations. Uh, the data type mappings are quite a hassle. You really need to, can be quite a hassle. You need to look into which field types you need to convert in the field types of the resulting database, and the same for the data itself. But for us, it's definitely worth the effort, and we hope that Beam will support this in the future. There has been some talk about this, so it would be quite nice. And then the last takeaway is that you need to make sure that your pipelines, especially the streaming ones, can handle schema updates. Because especially in a, in a microservice architecture, architecture, schemas change a lot. And uh, so it's nice that it happens automatically. Um, and to finish up, I just want to give you a glance at a future project of us, so, uh, which is called the Change Streams project. Uh, this architecture is uh, the current one, which I just explained. So um, each microservice has a Mongo database, it, uh, and it publishes, when there's an, an update, it publishes the structured data serialized on PubSub, which we then read in our streaming pipelines. In this architecture, the services itself 
are responsible for publishing uh, the entities that we really need, that we at the data side are interested in. And we want to sw uh, switch away from that. What we would love to see is that we can just hook into the Mongo database and decide ourselves in our pipelines which entities we want to listen on. And for this, uh, we, will, uh, use, uh, we will listen on the Mongo, base, Mongo database change streams. Uh, and we will probably use uh, splittable, splittable do funds on which uh, Alex is going to give a talk next. So if you guys are interested, uh, keep listening. Um, so this was my talk. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, thanks. Hi there. Um, that's a really interesting talk about um, schema updates. Um, are you in control of your schemas from your in your organisation, or, or is that outside of your department? Well, currently, um, each microservice itself is responsible for uh, changing the schemas. So, right. they uh, they have uh, the definition of their schemas in the repositories of their microservice. When they update it, it's published to a central repository. Right. But that's something that we want to change in the future. Uh, if that's the case, then where you have the problem of the deletes in BigQuery, mm -hmm. removing a field, could you mark those fields as optional in the protobuf? And then that could take care of yeah, it? Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a good idea. I mean, we've also been thinking about that. And it's definitely possible to, to mark it in protobuf itself. But in BigQuery, we cannot mark it. So we still we need to have right. a, a mechanism in BigQuery to mark it, right. which is holding us back right now. Okay. Can, can I add, add to that? Uh, if you remove a field uh, and mark it as optional in protobuf, and you then have like a useless field in BigQuery, after a while your BigQuery data warehouse will get uh, like polluted with lots of unused fields. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's a hard thing. It's better to handle it in the moment when you know what the field was, then like let years of years of legacy uh, that field in your BigQuery repo. Yeah, it's a really hard thing to manage. This, you like, know, yeah. how, it's to, like, how to do this. What's the best approach? Uh, so now, now, now the project's still growing, and there's like a lot of development going on. So it's now best to fix the problem now. Yeah. And how does the area of schema registries fit into this with the Beam pipeline? Would that help you in this case? Uh, how do you mean? So, so, so apparently, I think Beam is coming out with a schema registry in new versions. So ah, yeah, so uh, for it, yeah, we haven't really looked into it, but I uh, just uh, talked to Reuven Lex yesterday, and he said uh, because of the Beam SQL, um, there is more support for schemas in, in, uh, in Beam in general. Uh, but we don't know yet how it would right. fit in that way. Uh, there's also no protobuf to, to the schemas That's right, uh, yeah. support yet, but looking forward to it and also to contribute to it. Yeah, it would be a cool part to contribute to the big code. Yeah. Thanks. Anyone else? No. I think we're ready to move on to Alex's talk then. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Walter.